Welcome everybody to today's video. So we're doing a different kind of flight today. We're gonna fly a spaceship instead of a plane. So this is the Mercury crew capsule attached to, I think it's the Redstone rocket. And it was used in the early stages of human spaceflight. So let's jump in, see if we can get her into space and back again. So it's a really old school craft. Um, all you basically have access over is your temperature, your oxygen settings. Um, you've got gauges that tell you everything about the craft itself. And on the left here, you've got your mission stages. You do have some manual control over your direction when you're in space. So you can use these buttons on the left but mostly it's an automated flight. You just have to kind of make sure the capsule is in the right configuration for every stage. So we're gonna go over to our checklists and we'll go final checks. We'll run these. So launch control ready. Squibs to arm, uh, auto retro jettison armed and perform a radio check. There we go, we can clear that checklist. Okay, so there are eight minutes to launch, but rather helpfully, you can speed up the time in re-entry, this simulator. So we'll do that now. I've also played Mercury Go for Launch, which is more of like, I guess, an experienced space flight game than a simulator. The thing is in Mercury Go for Launch, you don't have any sort of speeding up options. So you find yourself sat waiting for things to happen quite a lot. So with 40 seconds left, we can go to our mission and briefing pages to see what we're doing here. We're going to go suborbital and after five minutes, the engines are going to fire and we can perform some fly-by-wire tests as well. Cool, lovely. Okay, launch control is definitely set to ready. Here we are, 10 seconds until we launch the space. All right, Eddie, that's it. We are off. So all you really have to do during ascent is just keep an eye on things. You can see here the pitch maneuver is starting to get us out of the Earth's atmosphere. All you've got to do is just monitor everything on the right here. So your cabin pressure um, should always be above, I think it's five and a half. On Earth, it's obviously slightly higher. Your temperatures should be somewhere round about here, I guess. This looks fine. This is fine, there's nothing on fire. Uh, the cabin oxygen is important. Your altitude's just down here, so you can see we're just climbing above uh, 40,000 feet. Okay, so we've got an ascent checklist here. So we'll go checklists, ascent, and we'll run these. So after tower separation, we've just got to secure our uh, retro engines. So we want to disable uh, retro jettison. but we'll wait until the launch tower has come off before we do that. Cool, so once we're in suborbital flight, we're gonna do some fly-by-wire pitch control system tests. Sounds good to me. But that's cool, because you'll get to see the all the fly-by-wire stuff working as well. There we go, we are well clear of the Earth here. Climbing, climbing, climbing. Pretty sure we're in space now. So just this display, there we go. We'll talk about that in a minute. Just wait for the tower to jettison now. So the red light means it's in progress, green light means it's done. So at this point, this goes to force. And that also goes to force, so it means we won't jettison our retro rockets. 
uh, before we need them to get back to Earth. Capture separation. Lovely. Okay, there we go. That's our stage separation. Unlike uh, SpaceX, these boosters just burn up in the atmosphere. So we're going to do a pitch control uh, fly-by-wire test. Yep, you go over to fly-by-wire over here, and basically you use W and S to modify your pitch it. And you've got some fuel gauges on the left, and that will tell you how much fuel you're burning. But it's very cool. There we go. Kind of stable here. And you can just see those rockets firing from outside. You've also got um, some roll controls here, as you can see, and your controls as well. Cool, so we need to get this back into auto mode. And there we go. Okay, so retro rockets fire in one minute. Lovely. So these controls here basically tell us it's like a flight director on a plane it tells you if you're in the right attitude um, for your next stage of a flight so the sequencer here knows the stages of the flight on the left hand side and that's timer based and basically your flight director here in the middle just checks whether you're in the correct attitude uh, for those maneuvers so obviously in auto mode it will align to the attitude required for the next stage of a flight and in fly-by-wire mode uh, you can change your pitch and basically just mess about in space for a little bit. But as soon as you go back to the autopilot, as you saw there, everything gets itself back where it should be. So, time to retrograde. Uh, we should have... Here we go, we're in retro attitude, and basically retro rockets should fire uh, very, very soon indeed. So retro warning basically tells you Retro rockets are about to fire, but you can silence that right there. And you'll see the um, fire retros, there we go, currently in progress. Retro rockets firing. Lovely. We have a retro checklist, so our warning light is illuminated. This is just like a monitoring thing. You can see the various lights during the process. So because retros are currently firing and have now fired, it turns green, um, and then in progress is jettisoning the retro rockets. So, now what we've got to do, just look at our re-entry uh, checklist. So, retro jettison needs to be armed so we can uh, jettison those. We need to switch the fuse back and attitude select, uh, we need to be in re-entry attitude there. There we go, set. Retro rockets have been jettisoned and it's going to maintain our re-entry um, attitude there. So you can see that's our retro rockets there floating off into space. Okay, back to the cockpit. So you can see the stages here that have happened on the left. Uh, five retros, retros have jettisoned. Apparently you can mess about with the fly-by-wire um, here as well. So if you want to mess about with your attitude for re-entry, but to make sure we're in the right attitude and we don't burn up, I'm gonna leave that in auto. There we go, we have a landing checklist here, which we're gonna run. We don't really have to do anything apart from set the radios to a different frequency once we get back to Earth. So you, again, you can see that most of the stages of flight were completely automated or based off a timer, at least. Um, it was just your job to configure the spacecraft so that it was able to do certain things at the times uh, that it required. Obviously, if you and not in the right attitude at re-entry you're going to burn up um, if you do certain things at, at the wrong time you're going to end up on fire okay so here we are this is a uh, re-entry gonna have to suffer this from inside the spacecraft let's try and monitor some gauges here temperatures uh, seem to be 
seem to be pretty good. Tavern Crusher's holding. Uh, oxygen is good. And I think... We may have survived that. The sky's turning blue. We're not dead. You can see we're at 60, 60,000 feet. Um, our descent rate there as well. So in a minute, because we're in the descent stage of flight, after a certain time, our drogue chute will fire and then our main uh, chutes will fire as well. Maybe at some point when I'm a bit more confident, um, I'm going to try messing about with the attitude control during re-entry, but I thought just for now, let's let's stay well away from that. So I'm going to flick the radios over here to complete our landing checklist for about, yeah, 30, 35,000 feet. Um, and that is pretty much the lot. There we go, drogue chutes are out. So this is an O2 alarm, um, but we can just silence that, I believe, because our cabin pressure is yeah still above above five and a half that's it main shoots are now out we're on our way back to earth you can see the periscopes out as we make our descent pretty soon what are we about eleven thousand feet pretty soon we'll hit the ocean so from a human perspective that's literally all you have to do to get into space and back again you just got to make sure the spacecraft is set up at the right things at the right time. Keep an eye on the O2 um, temperatures. You can manipulate a load of the electrical stuff down here. So you've got standby batteries, um, sort of like an emergency battery as well. So if we want, we can flick over to the standby battery and then flick the buses over to that standby battery. So if we had some kind of issue with our main battery, um, we could use, use that other battery. This is all explained in the tutorials that come with the game, but it's all basically about managing power, oxygen, uh, temperature, and just making sure the spacecraft is set up correctly for the next stage of flight. But the, the flight stages themselves are completely automated, which is pretty cool. So you can see here, there we go, main shoots out, landing bag has deployed. There we go, we'll just float down to Earth nice and easily. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a fairly harsh landing if you're actually if you're actually in this thing. Uh, there's our accelerometer. So currently we're only yeah, we're putting one G. But if we stay in the spacecraft for landing, I'm sure um, I'm sure we'll see that shoot up as well. I definitely recommend uh, the re-entry game. Sort of a much more sophisticated simulation than Mercury Go for launch. Like I said, Mercury Go for launch is more of like an experience thing that you'd get at a museum or something like that. But this is actually uh, sort of a well-modeled version of the spacecraft system. So if you wanted to do stupid things like turn your oxygen or your batteries off, um, if you wanted to be upside down for re-entry, if you wanted to jettison your retro engines before you came back, you could do that kind of thing. It's just it's just not a very good um, not a very good idea. And here we go. Are we down? There we go. Flash down. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, as we're bobbing up and down on the water there, everybody, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this um, slightly different video to the usual. Until next time, remember, you can always go around unless you're in a spaceship. Take care.